it's me Alina Knives and today we are going to be doing a quick get ready with me but while we're doing the get ready with me I'm going to be talking about my most recent experience with what I believed to be astral projection slash maybe even sleep paralysis I'm not quite sure what to categorize this experience but today's date is Wednesday July 15th 11 41 a.m. This experience actually happened yesterday morning. So I'm not really sure what time it started, but I do remember waking up from it around 5 54 in the morning from a very weird, terrifying experience. I'm going to try my best to try to explain what happened. The only way I can try to explain this is try to like show you. I can clearly see just this side of the room. Like I can see out of only this eye for some reason. And it was like, so you see how there's like three fingers in front of the lens? That is kind of like what I was seeing out of my eye. Like I was just seeing three fingers in front of my eye, if that makes sense. This is why I know it wasn't a dream. It had to have been like a form of like astral projection or something because I remember trying to move my hands away from my face and although I can see my hands right here in front of me both hands there was still those three fingers in front of my eye and I'm trying to like pull away pull away and like it wasn't making any sense because I'm like I can see my hands in front of me but how come my hands are still up here and that just led to me to, like it led me to think that it was my astral body like I can see the hands of my astral body however my physical body and being my hand is still right here bear with me please because it it will get even more weird as I progress I've never fall asleep like that but apparently I did and it was after my fiance had left the house too, which was um, kind of similar to my first experience. It was right after he had left to go to work. Anyway, and how come I always get headaches right when I want to talk about this stuff? So there was like this blue sheet that kind of just rised, out of, draped over someone with their arms out. Weird, because it wasn't like just a normal this shape. It was weird, I don't know my first instinct is really not to do what i did i started trying to say i rebuke you i rebuke you in the name of jesus i rebuke you and i tried to say it but like the back of my throat was so closed off and my tongue was pretty much pressed against the roof of my mouth and nothing was coming out like i couldn't even speak it was like like i was not allowed to say anything I couldn't move I couldn't say those words but I was trying to I was trying to scream them I was trying to say them and I was thinking about it too I kept trying to say it kept trying to say it and I couldn't say it it was like something was preventing me from uttering those words and so I remember getting up or like my astral body getting up out of me you know and I'm like I gotta find a light I gotta find a light I go to my boyfriend's nightstand but the weird thing is the plug for the lamp is actually behind the bed but in this world or in this version of my room the plug was actually weirdly in front of the dresser like on the dresser in front of it which doesn't make any sense but it was and I'm like oh the lamp isn't plugged in all the way and so throughout this entire time I'm still saying you know, I rebuke you, I rebuke you. Like, I'm trying to utter those words and I still can't. And I'm watching myself on the bed struggle, like, nearly, like, moving my entire body just to try to speak. I was really trying. And I couldn't say it. I just couldn't. It was not coming out at all. I don't have control over my astral self. It does whatever the heck it wants to do. And it returns whatever it wants to return while I'm trying to plug in the lamp which I know isn't even a hard task but I was frantic and I just couldn't plug it in I couldn't plug it in it was it was hard as if it was something that was preventing me from trying to turn turn the light on it's very intense because like I'm over here really 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 trying to like turn the light on and I can't and then it was just it was honestly a mess so the sheet ends up following me and drapes itself over this photo frame 
that was on the wall by the lamp that I was trying to turn on. In my real room, there is no picture hanging on that wall. And I didn't lift the sheet up to see the picture. I didn't touch the sheet. I was really focused on just trying to turn the light on. Eventually the light did turn on. It was very dim and it didn't really make much of a difference in my opinion, but it didn't stop. The sheet then went back to on the bed and yes, the creature thing is still there underneath the blanket. I don't see the creature, but I know it's not a person. I always like run out of breath and have to like breathe when I'm talking about this. It's strange. I feel like I'm back in my body and it then like the sheet drops. There's nothing underneath there. And then all of a sudden I feel like what feels to be a hand by my hand. And so what I do, I don't know why I fucking did this, but I grab it. I don't know. And then I'm like, as if I was like squeezing it like really, really hard, trying to like break the fingers or something. Like I was just trying to cause it harm. And I remember I'm just like twisting the fingers, like all angry, but the fingers that I was touching didn't have bones in them. I know how weird that sounds so it was just basically like jelly fingers like that's the consistency of the hand that I was trying to squeeze. It was it was disgusting <laughs> and it freaked me out and then I I actually woke up like for real for real woke up and when I woke up my fingers were right here over my face and those were the the three fingers I was that I was seeing in the astral projection. They were my own fingers that were just like right here over my eye. I never sleep like that. And who, like three fingers? Like why did it have to be three? Like I, I don't know. But I feel like three is a, like a motif almost in a lot of my um, astral projections. Like when I saw three shadows in the second astral projection, it's just strange. And now there was like three fingers in front of my eyes. I was talking to my friend Shirley. Shirley's been on this channel multiple times, but then she was telling me how around the same time I had that I was experiencing this astral projection, that she was actually experiencing negative thoughts of her own. So around the same time, me and her are both basically battling our demons. It's just so weird. Like we were in sync at the same time and she didn't even know it. Like I didn't know what she was going through until she came over and I told her and she was like, yeah, I need to um, cleanse my house and everything. I'm like, no way. I just cleansed my house today. She was like, really? And I was like, yeah. In my kitchen, I'm burning a seven day candle. Also, like I was just really just trying to break out everything. I broke out the Palo Santo and I started burning that as well. And I burned that in combination with dragon's blood. So it had like extra protection in this house. It just blew my mind because what the fuck? That's a for it to happen during the day was mind-blowing to me i didn't i don't know i don't know anymore to be honest this is some weird shit i'm like there has to be a pattern of why this would happen because it hasn't happened um in months and then i was like oh wait so sarah was actually visiting if you're familiar with my davi vanity videos heard me talk about a girl named sarah and she had a storage unit that she hasn't gone through in years like almost a decade like 10 years it's been since she's gone through everything she found a whole bunch of stuff i did that line way too thick wow anyway she found a whole bunch of stuff and a lot of it was things from when like when i was little and that's definitely going to be in a separate video because dude i as a kid i think i've always been creepy like i have some pictures i need to show you guys that make some it's it's fucking weird Okay. Um, sorry. It got like really warm for a moment. So the only thing connecting those three experiences was the act of bringing something into the house that, that belonged to somebody else. And that's exactly what happened. She was cleaning out the storage unit and she was like, here, here's a box of really old photos of you. Here's a box of, um, things you used to draw me when you were little. Here's a, you know, like a whole bunch of stuff she brought in here. And I know like it sounds like it sounds super innocent because I thought it was innocent too. I didn't even think about it. And it didn't really hit me until last night 
I was like, wait, this is a box of really old stuff. Could that cause this stuff? Inviting stuff in my house without knowing it? Surely was like, everything ties together because it's the past. You keep bringing the past into your house and maybe it's your past that's haunting you. And I was like, bitch, when did you ever make so much sense? And I'm just like, well, what am I supposed to do? Like, I don't wanna get rid of this, this is memories, you know what I mean? So she was like, try finding a way to bless your photography. So like the old baby pictures of me and things like that. Like how, if you guys know a way to bless photography or bless um, belongings that belong to others, let me know. The first two times when things were given to me, the people who gave them to me had actually passed away. Sarah's quite alive, so I don't know exactly um, why I experienced what I experienced. And if you guys have any like ideas of symbolism, please reach out to me because I'm trying to add symbolism together and I don't really know what the significance of you know, three fingers in front of my eyes could be, or, you know, the figure above my bed that was underneath a sheet that didn't even exist in my room. Like, I didn't actually have a sheet on my bed in the real world. So I don't know where the sheet came from. So if you guys have any explanations for anything, can you please let me know? Or if you guys have any ideas, just let me know. You know, naturally, she wanted to get filled in with everything. We talked, of course, about the whole Dobby situation and all that stuff. Like, she doesn't have the internet. She doesn't know how to work Google. Like, she doesn't do any of that stuff. Like, obviously, she couldn't have done her research. I was just letting her know, like, um, yeah, you remember that man that I used to talk about that I was, like, super in love with when I was younger? Yeah, it turns out he's like a pedophile. And then she was like, wow, like I'm really glad nothing ever happened to you. So it's such a genuine apology. And I almost felt bad for making her feel bad because I didn't want her to feel bad. I was like, on a personal level, did you ever find that it was a little weird that I was in love with an older man when I was like really young? And she was like, yeah, it crossed my mind, but also he made you so happy that I didn't want to be the one to take another thing away from you. Makeup is all finished. I want to thank you guys again for just being here and listening to me and just joining into this whole thing I have going on.